Got it. Okay. Okay, folks, we're going to go ahead and get started. We only have one bill on the agenda and House Bill 657. Before we start, this should be fairly quick. The author is here, and I think there might be uh, several speakers to the bill. But um, before anything more, we're going to open up with a, with a word of prayer. Representative Hill. Yes, sir. Let us pray. Our dear, kind, gracious, heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your blessings on us. We thank you for health and strength that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for every breath of air that we have. We just pray and seek your wisdom, your guidance, and everything that we do, because we realize, Lord, without you, we're nothing. We ask, again, your help in these matters that we do. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray and ask. Amen. Thank you, Representative. So, folks, we uh, we definitely have a quorum. Appreciate everybody's uh, coming by for this, as well as those of you online. I know uh, legislative schedules are tight this time of year. We have one bill uh, on the agenda today, House Bill 657. Uh, Representative Crow, you want to come on up? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. This is House Bill 657. It is LC number 431942. Um, there were actually two of the same bill dropped. Uh, Chairman Shaw and I had the same bill, and uh, we decided we uh, flipped a coin, I guess, to see who was going to handle it. And since he was busier than I am, we're going to proceed with mine. What this bill does in its simplest form is takes the Motor Carrier Compliance Division and Capitol Police Division officers and gives them the same retirement benefits and disability benefits as the Uniform Division of the Department of Public Safety, which is the state troopers. Um, they are also uh, sworn law enforcement officers, yet they don't have the same retirement benefits and disability benefits as all other state sworn law enforcement officers have. Uh, and since they are here every day, standing shoulder to shoulder with the state patrol, protecting us and uh, guarding us and, and securing our building, I think that it's uh, imperative that we include them in those definitions and get those same benefits that the other officers have. I can go a little deeper through each section if you'd like for me to, but that's essentially what it does. It just adds them to every definition uh, and includes them in the same benefits as the uniform division. Thank you that for that, Representative Crow. I, I did happen to uh, speak with uh, Chairman uh, or former Commissioner Hitchens about the bill, and he he basically said, and please correct me if I'm wrong, or if anybody from law enforcement, please correct my ignorance. But what this basically does is put uh, put puts all the public safety the uh, Department of Public Safety employees on a on a, on a level playing field. We're not having a different retirement age for motor compliance and uh, Capitol Police at 60 than we are the other, say, state troopers and so forth at age 55 or what have you. We're just bringing everybody and treating everybody fairly in the same. Is that is that not correct? Yes, sir. That's exactly correct. Okay. Um, anything more about the bill that you wanted to mention or what have you? Uh, no, sir. Not unless uh, there's any questions from the committee. I think. Uh, all right. We'll, we'll go to questions. Then. Anybody from the committee? How many questions? This is essentially we're going to be voting to send this to actual review. This has been an ongoing uh, issue for a number of years for a number of us, number of our constituents and so forth. We'll be sending, I, I'm, I'm hoping the committee will support uh, sending this to actual review uh, just from a, a further review, cost uh, analysis and, uh, and further study. Uh, number nine, is that? Representative Evans. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the bill. I definitely support it. My question to the chairman's point is um, just taking the first time we add this new language starting at line 26, we talk about the motor carrier compliance division and the Capitol Police Division. My The question in my mind is since we're setting out divisions, are there other divisions that we're leaving out and do we need to put that? Would we include more people law enforcement, would we include more sworn law enforcement officers in the Department of Public Safety if we took those two specific divisions out? Or are we leaving anybody else out? Not to my knowledge. These are the only, uh, this would cover all the sworn law enforcement divisions of the Department of Public Safety, to my knowledge. Uh, this would basically put all of, because this also includes the officers of GBI, game wardens, uh, and Department of Natural Resources, it would have all state sworn law enforcement officers. Uh, with the same benefits. Do you know why then we have the putting in those two divisions instead of just saying in 
in service in the Department of Public Safety as a sworn law enforcement officer, the commissioner or the deputy commissioner? No, ma'am. I, I don't know why Legislative Council chose to write it that way. Um, that's just the way they decided to add it or add it and include the commissioner and deputy commissioner of the MCCD Capitol Police. Thank you. If I may, I know uh, we have another question, but to Representative Evans' point, um, to your question, I believe this had to do with um, correcting something that was done under Governor Purdue years ago in regard to splitting out Capitol Police and motor compliance. Um, but your, your question is well taken, and we can circle back with Legislative Council. In regard to why not just list, just say all Department of Safety, Public Safety employees rather than I think where you're going, if, and I don't want to speak for you too much, but where you might be going is if we have to individually list people, are we inadvertently leaving off anybody uh, that we should be including? Is that what you're you're going toward? Yep, that is the concern. Absolutely, I just want to make sure we don't leave anybody out. And we have to keep coming back. We can uh, we can touch base with uh, uh, Blake Travis and Leg Council just to, to be absolutely certain, as well as our friends in law enforcement. We definitely don't want to uh, disenfranchise anyone. Thank you. Number four. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to add, uh, I have great friends in the Motor Carrier Compliance Division, uh, and it is my understanding that they all go through almost the same training as state troopers, except they go for accident reconstruction and you all go for the motor vehicle side. Is that correct? And, and so for members of the committee, um, I, I think it's important for us to understand that because they essentially received the same training as, as state troopers uh, and for them not to have received benefits in line with that when they only have one class difference um, to me is, uh, is is pretty alarming. So, so thank it, you, Representative Crow. It's about fairness. I think that's where Representative Mallow is going. Yes, any any further on that? No, Mr. Chairman, I uh, Major Vickery is here. He is the uh, commissioner of the Motor Carrier Compliance Division. And I just wanted to have him here in case there was any questions uh, for him as well. But to your point, Representative Mallow, that is correct. They are all post-certified officers, um, just as every other law enforcement officer in the state that's that's governed by post, except they have additional training uh, to allow them to do the specific job regarding the uh, commercial uh, vehicles and such. Okay. Representative Mallow, does that answer your question? It, it does. It okay. Does. All right. Very good. Mr. Vickery, did you did you want to say more in regard to that? No, sir, I just, Mr. Chairman, I just appreciate you guys taking this into consideration. Uh, we've been under Department of Public Safety since 2005. We're, we're, we're on, if you don't mind, we're on uh, uh, Zoom as well as broadcast. So if you could just speak to the mic, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, again, appreciate you for letting me speak for uh, my division, but we've been under Department of Public Safety since 2005. And I think it was a mere oversight in state law because we were once under DMVS prior to that. So uh, any consideration in getting this kind of squared away where we kind of all fit under the same uh, benefits as far as our retirement. And if one of our officers wants to get hurt in the line of duty is much appreciated by my officers. It seems to me, and I don't want to speak for your department, sir, but it seems like to me, this is a fairness and parity, but it's also a recruiting issue. If someone says, you know, I've got to work X number of years until I'm 60. And at that point I have 30 years or what have you versus 55. It seems like to me a, a recruiting issue for you. Yes, sir, and I don't know what South Carolina or Alabama or others are doing, but it, that's the way, it, the way I would see it. Yes, sir. Thank you for the comment. Uh, number 15. Representative Williams. Okay, we've got a couple other questions, but I appreciate that. Hold on. Okay, we have a question from Vice Chairman Tom Kirby. Tom, are you on? Yes, if I can get unmuted. Is he on mute? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you got me now. Hello? Tom, if you're, you can hear us, you're, you may be on mute. Okay, any other questions online? All right, you got me now? Okay, I think we're got it corrected now. Representative Kirby, can you go ahead? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's much better. All right. Thanks. 
All right, thank you. Um, the the age 55, we also have some, in, um, and I'm not sure the exact title inspectors or officers in DPH that would be left out of that age 55. That's something I've heard from other constituents on. Um, as we move forward on this, especially maybe taking the actuary data, I would certainly like to at least include them in there to see what that dollar amount comes back at. For Department of Public Health? Yes. Okay. Because they, that, that would leave them as the only real law enforcement statewide that doesn't have that same benefit. Of a retirement age of age, age 55? Yes. Okay. All right, number 10, is that uh, uh, Leader Wilkinson, Wilkerson? Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question. Um, I'm looking at section four, lines 150 through 156. Everywhere else in the bill, we break out the category. So if you can follow me here. Um, let me go back. So we talk about the Uniform Division of Public Safety, um, the GBI on certain dates, but then there's other categories that qualify at 55, the Department of Natural Resources, Department of Revenue, that are not included in this section when we talk about highest compensation during the previous 24 periods. Is there a reason why those other subcategories are not included in this section? Does that make sense? To the author? Um, no, sir. Not that I'm aware of. Again, this section, the only change that was made to this code section was adding the uh, Motor Carrier Compliance Division and Capital Police Division uh, to this code section. Why it doesn't include those others, um, I, I couldn't answer other than this is simply talking about how their compensation is calculated. So they may be calculated, uh, the GBI, Department of Natural Resources Game Boards may be calculated on a different rate than these are. Do we want the Capitol Police and Motor Compliance Division to be calculated on the same as the public service? Or, I mean, it, it, was it a previous omission or was it a reason for it not being included? I'm just curious how the others are calculated for highest compensation. Yeah, again, I don't, I don't know how the others are calculated. Um, this uh, code section here, 47-2-223, simply talks about the calculation for the Uniform Division Department of Public Safety. And all we're doing in this bill is adding the Motor Carrier Compliance Division and the Capitol Police Division to get them on par with the other members of the Department of Public Safety. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Representative Evans? I wait. Okay. Got it. Okay. Well, is any other speakers, uh, I think that's all the questions of the committee and online, any other speakers toward the bill or, or what have you, I'm sure this will be met on and, and discussed over the interim or what have you. Uh, Mr. Vickery, thank you for being here uh, very much. All right. I believe we have uh, Representative Williams, what's your number 15? Uh, yes, sir. Well, I think what we are in, what I hear you saying is that we're in a posture to uh, have a committee vote to move it to actual review. Is that correct? All right. Is there a second? second. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. We have one question. Representative Buckner, are you eight? Yeah, go ahead. So we're moving it for the study, but we had talked about double checking to make sure that we're covering everybody. Will that be amended somehow before that goes to study? So what, what I would propose that we do is agree to move it actual review if we need to do a sub before the end of session. And I suggest we do that and take another committee action to move that. If, if, it, if needed be amended sub to actual review before it leaves the committee. Okay. Would that be agreeable? Yeah. I because just, we're not looking to exclude anybody. We just want to make sure we didn't. Right. And exactly. We want it all in the study so we'll know what the actual cost is. Exactly. We don't want to get to March next year and then we left somebody out. Right. I fully understand what you're saying there. I just wanted to make sure we were still Absol doing that. Absolutely. 
Representative Crow, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you. We'll move this to actual review. Uh, Representative uh, Wilkerson or Evans, my Cobb County. You're no longer a Cobb County person anymore. Do you want to uh, you want to work with me maybe tomorrow and and and, and it, maybe do you mind working with the author and making sure we're not excluding any particular groups, particularly out of department, our friends in Department of Public Safety, um, and and uh, Vice Chairman Kirby, I, I would I would encourage you if you could to. Uh, to work with Lake Travis and Lake Council in regard to making sure that DPH is treated fairly as well, particularly Absolutely. in regard to this bill. Okay. Okay. All right. That's all we have. Meeting adjourned, folks. Thank you. Thank you. It's.